What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 107waivers.com. This is our first video, and we're gonna kill it. Maybe we're not gonna kill it, but we're gonna try really hard. So we're trying to make 107waivers.com exciting. It's boring to learn regulation, so hopefully what we can do is be short, concise, to the point, and exciting about teaching you how to do advanced operations. So congratulations, you guys are watching this video because you have received your 107.29 operational waiver for daylight operations. Jakey, why is that so awesome? What can you do with the daylight operations waiver now? You can do thermal inspections, you can do yeah. nighttime photography. True. You All can right. do light shows. All right, let's get All into right. it. Jakey, hit us off. Tell us what is at the top of this waiver. So, first page, right at the top, responsible person, very important. Just like the remote pilot in command is in charge of the flying, this person is in charge of the waiver. And guess what? If you don't follow any of these, that person is who the FA is going to come at. At the bottom of the first page, there's also a date. Just put this in your records. It has the date that it's authorized and the date that it expires. Okay, common special provisions. How many, well, how many provisions are there? Let's go to the bottom. 13. There's 13 provisions. All right, let's try to get through these fast because we know that your time is valuable. You guys need to get out there flying in the dark, right? Common special provisions, number one, responsible person must read the waiver and make sure that everybody operating reads the waiver and all the supporting documents. Remember, we submitted a waiver safety guide. <laughs> Read all these. Bah, bah, bah. Boring. Boring. boring, 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 <laughs> but it's there. Provision number two, the waiver must not be combined with any authorizations, waivers, exemptions, or anything prior that you guys already have approved by the FAA. So don't go flying in class D because you got your night waiver and you think that you can do it now. You can't. The FAA has the authority, this is provision four, excuse me, provision three, the FAA has the authority to take this waiver away from you at any time for whatever reason. They're gonna contact you somehow in an official manner. It's not gonna be a spam phone call. Number four, you have to have a copy of the waiver on hand, digitally print it, stick it in the binder, in the glove box, whatever. Just have it on hand. Uh, provision number five, the responsible person listed on this waiver must maintain a current list of the people operating. So if you have five people, there better be five names on that list or that responsible party is going to get dinged by the drone police. <laughs> provision number six, the responsible person also must list the aircraft. So again, if you're out there flying and your drone is not listed on a piece of paper somewhere, you're breaking the rules, you can't. Last common special provision number seven, this is just saying who direct participants are remote pilot, visual observer, anybody else at the controls, the rest don't count. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, I know y'all want to go out there and just send it, but you need a VO in order to send it at night. That's number eight. <laughs> Boom. All right, number nine. You have to conduct the training that assigned to you by us on the LMS. You completed it. You got a certificate. There's also a spot on this log to track that. So do your training. Night illusions, night vision, lighting, and so on. Number 10, got to do a daytime night survey. We're going to get you a sheet for that as well. Let me see that. Basically, it's going through. You go to your spot during the day. You write down obstacle, where you're going to take off, operational area. That way, when you get there at night, you know where that power line is that you can't quite see. So provision 11 is something that we have have to really pay attention to, right? We need some sort of light on the top that is visible for at least three. Turn that baby on. We're gonna blind ourselves, right? Oh, <laughs> don't look at it at night. Oh, I'm ruining my night vision right now. That is a terrible That's idea right. to look at this, right? Do not look at it. You guys gotta put a light on there and you have to see it for at least three miles. We're gonna do some videos about that actually later to debunk whether they do or do not shoot that far. Number 12, do not transmit ADSB out. Next. <laughs> Cut number 13, all emitters need to be FCC compliant. Pull this sucker out, this is the little, little radio. On here is an FCC thing. It'll be really blurry, you can't see it, but trust me, it's there. It's not blurred out just because it's not. I think that's all the provisions. That was 13, right? We've hit them all. That's Perfect. 13. So again, use your handy dandy quick guide to follow along at home. We're also gonna go into the field and actually show what this site survey looks like and everything like that. But for now, read your waiver, and we'll see you in the next video.